Okay, so I'm going to give you this, this new handout where previously uh, I gave you a company profile. I'm going to give you a new handout, and I'm going to remind you where the, where the handouts are at because you might not remember from last week. So on your computer, you should have your computer on. Everyone's computer should be on. You want to go up to the computer, computer window at the top left. Double-click computer. And then inside of the network location, you're going to see classroom data, drive Z. Uh, that's our network folder. So whenever I say, I'm going to give you something in the network folder, that's the network folder. So double-click classroom data, drive Z, as in zebra, in the network location. And then you want to scroll down. It's alphabetical. You want to scroll down to find uh, this, the class, this class folder, which is Campos SEO. So scroll down to Campos SEO. If you weren't here last week, these are items that I added last week. There's the syllabus, a couple of drawings that I made regarding concepts, the instruction number one, long tail strategy. I'll be giving you instruction number two later today. And then a client company profile, which is something that I gave out, if you recall, that I said that the, uh, the way that you really, if I'm a company trying to work for another company, I do that sort of questionnaire for them to really know about their company. And it's useful for yourself to know about your own company, too. Today's handout is client marketing strategy. So what you want to do is uh, copy that um, to, actually, it's still coming down this right here. If you, can, right um, you want to copy to your desktop the, com the client marketing strategy. Copy it to your desktop. And I'll turn the printer back on in a little while. You don't really need to print this. You want to fill it out inside of Word. So copy that to your desktop, and then we'll open it. Once you've copied it to your desktop, you can close the network folder. So does anyone need any help getting that file? Everyone got the file? Does anyone need any help getting the file? It's actually coming that this way. Okay, so this is another uh, two-page thing. There's a title page where you can fill in your company name. I'm not asking you to do this right now, and I'm not asking you to turn to fill this in and turn it in for for a grade and such. I'm asking you to look at this in case you don't have any of this planned out because. Uh, SEO really goes hand in hand with SEM. Does anyone remember what SEM is from last week? Search engine marketing. So search engine marketing goes with search engine optimization, SEM and SEO. And so in short, SEM is what you do on your website, and SEM is what? Outside your website. And so what we'll be doing is looking at a little bit of a marketing strategy here, which is what you might do outside of your class. So I'm going to go through this and talk about it in theory, and then we'll do it in practice. If you have questions, of course, I'll answer your questions. But I've got these various uh, topics to think about regarding your company. Again, this is something that my company would do for a client to fully understand that company to do the best job that we can for them as SEO people. So what do you want to accomplish? I'd be asking the client, what do you want to accomplish? You have a presence online for a reason. Are you trying to sell something? Are you trying to build awareness? Are you artistic and want people to appreciate your work? Do you have a group you belong to that needs members? Take a moment to write about what you want to accomplish with your online presence. And your online presence is everything you're doing online. Your website, your social media, uh, your Amazon sales account, your Etsy store, your Yelp, that's all your online presence. So the example here, Vic.co, 
wishes to create a powerful social media presence because we want to interact with existing customers and through word of mouth reach new customers. We want to connect with people on Instagram in a very visual way. So this theoretical company perhaps from the beginning knew or through back and forth discussion figured out that it wants to reach an audience via social media. So that's the main goal of this company, using social media for new customers, to um, tech support old customers, let's say. And they want to also then use Instagram, focusing on Instagram perhaps. So this goal might change and it'll probably change. Marketing always changes. You see these ad campaigns of a particular company and maybe they last a long time, but they often change. So one of the long lasting marketing campaigns is the Got Milk campaign. I don't know if they still run it, but it was running for like, what, a decade. So a lot of us remember that. Um, and so in the case of the Milk Council, they wanted to build awareness to drink more milk. And they started at a time before the internet was very prevalent in many people's lives. So there were a lot of print campaigns, TV campaigns. Then they got online. And so what they wanted to accomplish was to get people to drink more milk. You have to figure out what, you're, what are you trying to accomplish online. Uh, I might have that bakery, that Victor's Bakery that I often mention um, as an example company in my classes, Victor's Bakery. Well, my goal is that I want to sell cupcakes, let's say. So I sell those cupcakes at my shop on Main Street, but I also want an online presence because that will be a form of marketing, a form of advertising online to drive people to come to my store. Sometimes people ask me, well, if, if social media is so important nowadays, do I still need a website? And you do, actually, uh, depending on what you're trying to do online. If I'm trying to sell those cupcakes, I can advertise cupcakes all day long on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Periscope, um, Vine, MySpace, etc., etc. I can advertise my products all day long on social media. But on most social media at the moment, I cannot sell anything directly. Only the big companies can. Nike and Walmart and uh, Bed Bath and & Beyond, and etc. The big companies right now have partnerships with the social media that they can sell their products directly from a tweet. Uh, did you know that you can buy something off of Amazon through a tweet? Um, did you know that on Pinterest, if you see something from certain companies, uh, like I guess Martha Stewart company, you can buy the product directly from a, from a pin on Pinterest? If you didn't know that, that's because you're not one of the big companies. You don't have that access yet. But all of these social media companies are basically moving toward that, letting the little guys, letting us, letting us as companies sell stuff via tweet via PIN on Pinterest, but not at the moment. That's why we still need a website, because that's where we will have our e-commerce uh, website. That's where we will have the website where people can donate to the nonprofit. That's where we'll have the, the newsletter where people can sign up for. But we still need social media to get traffic. So figuring out what do you want to accomplish online is one of the most important things to figure out. Any questions on that concept? Yes. I guess just in terms of accomplishment um, and website presence, wouldn't it always be important to have your own website just because you'll always have control of that because social media changes so fast and what's popular today, like MySpace was popular years ago and now pretty much nobody's on MySpace. That's a, very, that's a very good point. You almost always do want a website. Um, there could be reasons why you might be able to run everything off of, let's say, um, an Etsy account. So you've got Etsy and you're able to sell products that way and you've got a home page on Etsy so you might not need a separate website. So it just depends what you're trying to accomplish online, but usually 98% of the time you want your own website because you have the full control.
Okay, who is your target audience? This definitely goes into the concepts of marketing. So it's important to focus on a target audience. It's nice to say that everyone will be interested in your product or your cause or your group or whatever, but it just isn't true in the real world. Who are the people that would like to know about your product? What are their age ranges, gender, economic group, musical style? In short, who would care about your product? In essence, we are creating a persona of a potential client. And the example here is the people who want to hire Vic.co are people that are trendy but know what they want. There are people that are in their 30s who are successful, own their own company, need a website, and know the value of web design. So, I, for example, in the real world, I remember speaking with a potential client a few years ago that, um, of course, early on the question was, uh, who's your target audience? Who are you trying to sell to? And his answer was, well, everyone. Now, digging further into his product, he was selling baby strollers. So, no not everyone would care about a baby stroller. Not even every parent would care about a baby stroller. Just a certain age range of, of parents, right? So digging further, exploring more his product and such, eventually he was able to fine-tune his target audience to be young Latino first-time parents. That's what, that was his target audience. That's who he was trying to market to the most. Once you have more of a laser focus on who you're trying to market to, who your website is for, who your product is for, you will be able to uh, reach them better. You will be reaching a persona, you will be reaching um, a real kind of customer, instead of saying everyone, because no, not everyone would care. Let's say a pizza shop, they might say, yeah, everyone, I'm going to market to everyone. Everyone loves pizza. True or false? Raise your hand if you don't like pizza. At least one person, raise your hand. Okay, so let's say, okay, there we go. Not everyone likes pizza for various reasons. So no, not everyone would love my pizza shop, especially if I don't have any lactose-friendly options, gluten-free friendly options, etc. So even if you're selling any kind of product, you probably will be really focusing in on a persona. And this is a deeper conversation that we don't really have as much time to go into because the whole... Uh, concept of marketing itself is a college major. It's, it's years of study really to understand completely marketing. I'm giving you enough, just enough to be dangerous. And uh, one of the things is about a persona. A persona is a fictional client that you're trying to win over. If I have this persona of 30-year-old uh, entrepreneurs, I'm on my way to trying to reach that audience. If I don't know who I'm trying to market to or trying to sell to, then I might not be able to craft my message most effectively. But if I literally, this is an exercise that is often done in marketing, we would actually write a biography of a fictional person. John Smith grew up in San Diego, has a degree in whatever, has worked at this company this long, cares about this music, the whole point of that is that then there is a real person to market to rather than an idea of we want customers. No, we want this customer. We want John. We want Janet. We want Bill. Because creating personas to reach them um, is effective. That's obviously a big can of worms and depends how deeply you want to get into it. But one sentence like this is enough, although this is a very dense sentence that I will break down. Uh, people who are trendy but know what they want. That could be people that, um, you know, uh, have a modern sensibility. Let's say the current style of web design is a very flat look. Have you noticed the evolution of websites? There used to be a lot of drop shadows and shiny colors and such, and now it's becoming more muted and, and solid colors, pastel colors. So that's a trend at the moment. It may hold, it may not but I'm trying to get hired uh, to, for these people that want to, to uh, deal with the current trends of web design. I want to deal with people that are in their 30s. Uh, so yes, I could say everyone uh, needs a website, basically they do, but I'm focusing on the people that are in their 30s who are also successful, so maybe they hit upon the next great big concept and they've got a successful website. And then they also recognize the value of web design, the literal and figurative value of web design. 
uh, figurative in that they understand that a website will help them, and literal in that they understand that a website is not a $200 thing. It really depends on what kind of website you need and that they're comfortable paying $2,000, $5,000, $10,000 if necessary to have a good website. So that's a persona there, and that's the audience that I'm trying to reach. Those would be the ones that care about the particular product that my fictional web design company, Vic.co, would be trying to court and trying to get hired by. Any questions on this concept? It can be as detailed as you want, of course. I mentioned a few examples, age ranges, gender, economic group, etc. The question, do you have an aspirational competition? It's good to have role models, both in life and in business. Is there a business you see that makes you think, I want to be like that? Or a business that makes you think, I want to do that, but better? List the company, person, brand, etc. that you feel is in competition with you, but that you would like to emulate. Why do you want to emulate them? Vic.co feels that XY Designs is our aspirational competition because they are well known in the field of web design and their style is unique and modern. So this is your competition. Last week we had that exercise where we looked at, um, we did some searching and we looked at these companies uh, that were using some of these keywords that we're trying to use. And we, as best as possible from a critical point of view, analyzed their website to see what was good about it, maybe was, what was not so good, what hit me emotionally good, and so forth. And so that's your competition. And in the grand scheme of it, your business is, in, is going to be in competition always. You may think you're the only uh, vegan-friendly, gluten-free, fair trade, organic, dog food bakery in San Diego, but you're not. Others <coughs> probably are around and up and coming. You might think you have a niche that you've cornered the market, but you probably haven't. You're yet another web designer, graphic designer, realtor, dog walker, teacher, tutor, etc. Uh, there's lots of competition out there. And so you want to use that to, to your advantage aspirational as in someone to aspire to and someone to be as good as if not better you have to look around and see who else is doing what you're doing and how can I do better how can I take what they've done and build upon it um, real-world example one of our clients they're a Mexican food restaurant uh, they're doing really well. They've, uh, they started in Tijuana, came to San Diego, moved up to LA, or expanded actually. They have a goal of eventually going to Las Vegas, expanding different restaurants and such. And when we were hired to do this stuff a few years ago, we asked them this question again, who's your aspirational competition? Who are you competing with? Who do you feel is doing it right? And you want to do it like them, but better. And he said, Phil's Barbecue. How many of you have heard of Phil's Barbecue before? Many people. If you haven't, Phil's Barbecue is one of the most famous names in barbecue joints in San Diego. They may or may not have the best barbecue because everyone's got an opinion on the best, of course, but they are synonymous in many circles with the best barbecue in San Diego. Now that's American style barbecue. And this restaurant that I just mentioned is, is Mexican style barbacoa. So different different kind of food, but he was aspiring to be like Phil's Barbecue. Digging further, we asked, well, why? What is it about his uh, that restaurant? And he said, well, they've got a line out the door every day of the week. If you've been there, you'll see that there's a sign outside of the door that says, 40-minute wait from this point, just like a ride at Disneyland. And so he's got people, or the owners there, have people waiting to get in 40 minutes just to eat which may or may not be truly the best barbecue, but they've got various things, the allure, the name recognition, the amount of time in San Diego, various reviews and all of that. So he is trying to be like Phil's Barbecue in that they have a line all the time, that they're synonymous with San Diego barbecue joints. 
uh, various other things, fame like that. Um, this restaurant does have a line out the door on the weekends. Throughout the week, not as much. So his goal is try to do that throughout the whole week. There's people waiting to get in the restaurant. And then when you talk about good Mexican food restaurants in San Diego, he wants his restaurant to be in the, in the top ten, if not the top three. So having that competition, that might not be an exact competition. It's not another Mexican food restaurant, but it's a restaurant. Having that competition helps you because, again, aspirations. You're trying to reach a goal. You're going toward the future. What do you have now? What's your future goal? If you've got that defined, that helps you reach that goal. The point of this also is check what is Phil's Barbecue doing on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Check what they're doing. When we touch on social media, and especially if you take my social media class, I talk in there about, well, you're probably going to get writer's block very early on. If you're going to do social media for real, you're going to get writer's block early on. What am I going to tweet about again? What am I going to put on Facebook again? What am I going to do on Periscope again? Well, your competition will serve as your inspiration also. What are they doing? What ideas are they putting forth on social media? How are they putting their photos and such? And you might not have a huge crew to do a professional kind of photo like McDonald's. But the idea, like I saw recently, they had this little animation of chicken nuggets uh, flying through the air, a little stop-motion animation. There was a drawing of the sky and then chicken nuggets going across the sky. I can do that. I can do that with my cupcakes. I just got the idea of McDonald's doing a simple stop-motion animation and I can do that right on my phone. So that's also why you want to think about the competition to get inspiration. Vision statement. Last week we talked about a mission statement. A mission statement tells the world where you stand. A vision statement tells the world where you're going. Write a statement that makes predictions about what you want to accomplish as a company or brand. You may set a time horizon. Five years, for example. Vic.co will be known for producing or providing eye-catching web design to San Diego's most elegant restaurants. So my mission statement last week might have been something like Vic.co uh, wants to uh, provide the best uh, uh, web design for clients. Here I'm trying to say that with, I didn't put a time horizon, but let's say within five years we're trying to focus on restaurants. We're trying to go toward doing the best web design for restaurants that further is defined by the by the uh, target audience, the, the demographic. Once I figured out at the top here my target audience, I've incorporated that into my vision statement that I want to reach restaurants. Mission and vision statements often run together, but technically a mission statement is where you are right now as a company, and vision statements are where you want to be as a company. And so what you can do is look up just about every company on their website somewhere, you're going to see their mission statement or vision statement. And most regular people are not going to ever look at it. But that mission statement informs many of the actions of the business. Even here, if I go to the website, you can try this. If you open your web browser and it goes to our website, the college's website, you will see at the very bottom, mission to provide ongoing learning opportunities, preparing diverse individuals for career advancement, a college education, or enriched lives through good health and personal fulfillment. That's the mission of this college. That's what they're trying to accomplish. And again, sometimes mission and vision statements run together. Sometimes in a mission statement, they also put in what they're trying to accomplish in the future. Vision statement. What's the difference between mission and vision? Okay, once again, a mission statement is where you are currently at as a company, and a vision statement is where you're going as a company. Um, if we look at here, if we read this mission statement, it goes on in much more detail. Look at this vision statement, philosophy statement. What's the difference between that? Uh, well, I'd have to look that one up. They might be using a philosophy statement as 
something more uh, prosaic, core values, here we go, mission statement extract, abstracted, and mission statement comprehensive. So you can get examples right from our own, from our own um, website to provide ongoing learning opportunities, etc. Vision, San Diego Continuing Ed will be the state's leading non-credit educational provider based on quality of services offered and variety of courses available assisting students to transform their lives. Okay, so you read both of those. Mission statement, what the company currently is doing, providing learning opportunities. What it wants to be, Vision, the leading non-credit educational provider in doesn't say in San Diego or California or the, or the or the nation but that's a goal that's gonna be the leading provider of this let's say randomly I'm gonna go look up Chipotle's mission statement if I can find it I haven't looked for it yet but oftentimes on any website if you go usually somewhere to their About Us page, maybe maybe their investors page, because oftentimes that's also something for the investors. Mission statement, vision statement. Uh, I'm going to take a look here under About Company. Seems to be some sort of story there. It might not be, unfortunately, literally marked as mission statement or vision statement, but probably around somewhere the um, Chipotle stock is $724 a share, really? Wow, they're doing it right. Um, so somewhere I would probably find press releases maybe. I'm not going to go too far into it, but didn't quite find it that easily here. Let's see the other big one, mcdonalds.com. Internal server error. Oops, I broke the McDonald's website. The McDonald's stock price is $104 per share. Usually, the usually those things need to be more detailed, especially if they're on the stock market to ha uh, keep investors happy. But okay, not didn't quite find it right away. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but you can always look them up. Um, what I also like to do, if you really want to get detailed, you can go to some financial website, and usually on these financial websites, you can uh, get that sort of information. So, in any event, the reason you also work uh, to write a mission or vision statement is that is going to inform perhaps part of what you set up in your social media. Every social media network asks you to fill in some kind of biography. So that little small paragraph oftentimes is very important to fill in because then when people visit you on Twitter or on Facebook and they want to know what you're about quickly it's often going to show up that biography so if you craft the biography to let people know right away family owned business in East Lake specializing in um, modern web design okay that reached 
hit a lot of keywords and hopefully it hit people that would care about those things. A small business. I don't want to hire yet another big web design company. I like this, that it is a family-owned web design company. Um, I want a website that is modern with the latest technology. That's what they do also. So this is also going toward answering that why that we asked last week. Why would someone want to hire you? Why would someone care about your business? Any questions on the vision statement? Also, before I mention the last one, where did the sign-in sheet go? Where did the pink sheet go? Did everyone get the sign-in sheet? No. Who needs it? Okay. Is there any space on it left? Okay. You can have this sign right here. Yes, were you here last week? Yeah. Yes. All right, so the last item here, the unique selling proposition. What do you provide your customers no one else can? What makes you stand out from the rest? How do you uniquely solve their problems? Answer the question of why. That is, why would a client hire you? Vic.co is based in San Diego. And many from our team graduated from Southwestern College, San Diego State University, and UCSD. We therefore know the local culture. We can create a compelling website that caters to San Diego companies. So we're saying here that we are local. Your company's local. We grew up here in San Diego. Your company's from San Diego. We know San Diego culture. We're going to provide something that, that maybe slightly more affordable Los Angeles company might not provide. That company that gave you that presentation from New York, They're, they might have a great website, but they are not going to provide you perhaps with what we will because we're also San Diego based. So that's answering that why again. So something about this that makes you stand out to a potential customer. All of this stuff is a lot of theory, but the, the practicality of it we will apply and talk about as the course goes on, but this would be something like I would be putting on my home page somewhere. Uh, I've got this website that I'm a, a graphic designer and I want to get hired to do graphic design and I'm writing about things like this that hopefully resonate with a potential client and putting that right on my home page so that when someone visits the home page and they see my portfolio and such, but then they also see something that makes me stand out, hopefully that helps me get hired. You are a nonprofit organization, let's say. You, uh, you want to help, uh, you know, ecologically um, get donations for saving the rainforests, let's say. Well, you and a, a bunch of other companies. But what makes, it, what makes you unique to stand out? Well, maybe you help, the, uh, you help people directly because all your profits go to the rainforest and you uh, lived in various villages at that time to help you really understand the culture. And so what is your unique selling proposition? What makes you different and possibly better than the rest of the competition? Because you're going to have competition always. You may think you're the most unique company out there, but someone might be doing the same thing you are or something very similar to what you are. So how are you going to differentiate yourself what's unique about you, what's your USP, unique selling proposition, to get uh, ahead of the competition. So this whole document is a lot, of, a lot of theory, but it is valuable to think about this before you do any SEO and social media. And again, my company does this. We answer these questions with the interested parties, with the owner of the business, get it as detailed as we can, maybe spend a few sessions to get this done even before we do any social media because we want to have this laid out as best as possible to help us on our future endeavors. If you're doing this for your own company, again, your interested parties, who has a stake in this? Um, so if you've got a, if, if it's, if, if you're a husband and wife team and you're doing a, a this business, well, obviously, you too are the ones that are going to need to talk about this and figure it out. Um, what if then you get also input from other 
people in the company. That might be valuable, but you don't want too many cooks in the kitchen. You don't want too many people giving an opinion because everyone's going to give an opinion about what the vision is of the company. So you really want to focus it on who's the decision makers, who are the ones that can say yes or no to something. You want to take input from the team, sure, but then ultimately someone has to say yes or no. So any questions on this document? Thank you. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, let's take our first break a little bit early because we're going to shift gears. Once we've got this stuff in mind, we're going to shift gears uh, about setting up the webmaster tools. I'm going to give you a handout right now. You can print it out if you'd like. I'm going to turn on the printer and we'll start a break. But let me put in a brand new document into the network folder. You can print this one out if you'd like. Yes, right after I, I turn on the printer. Uh, so, um, let me remind you one more time where the network folder is at. You want to go to your, your desktop, open the computer window, You'll see network location, that's our network folder, our network drive. Double click classroom data drive Z as in Zebra. Scroll down to my folder, which is Campos SEO. If you came in a little bit late, the document that I was talking about was client marketing strategy, and I just put in Campos SEO number two, webmaster tools. So you want to copy these to your desktop. Don't just double click them. You want to copy them to your desktop and then from your desktop double click and you can print. It's 10.15. We'll take a 10 minute break. We'll be back at 10.25. When we come back we're going to set this up. So hopefully you have your login information because we're going to shift gears to talk about the webmaster tools in general but then to actually install them on our website. Okay.